Hi everyone, for those of you who are new to the community, I'm Michael Matera and I'm a teacher, presenter, and YouTuber. This is my channel and it's for educators to help them find the joy in the journey of both teaching and their lives. So have a look around, subscribe, and be a part of this community. I love it when we're able to connect, so let's do that. Now, let's dive into the rules of today's game, which is Kokoro Avenue of the Kadama. This is a great game that offers some fun challenges, as well as great replayability with its many twists that we can add into it, which I'm just excited to share with you guys. So let's start with what you need to play the game. For pre-game setup, all you will need is to pick up a template that you can find on our site, which is tinyurl.com slash global let's play. There you can find all of the games that we offer here on this channel, and you'll be able to click any one of them and get up a presentation that has links to video tutorials like this, as well as any of the templates you're gonna need to use all the templates can be used on a device like an iPad or an iPhone, as well as be printed off. And if you happen to be a teacher like me who is in love with laminating, you can print these off, laminate them, and use a little dry erase like this, and you'll be all set to play games with us in the future. Additionally, for this game, we'll also be using Google Sheets for each play. It will be important that you'll have access to a device that will let you look at Sheets. That's all you're gonna need to be ready to play with us on the stream. So let's get started with scoring. There'll be five rounds in the game and each round is gonna be starting with me revealing one of the six sanctuary cards by flipping over a card. And so in this example, we're playing for sanctuary A. And there are six in the game, so this means one will not be used. And this is where we're gonna be using the Google Sheet and not my cards. I will put them up on the screen so that you can all see and if you want access to it yourself. So make sure you have it. All right guys, so this is how the template's gonna look that you're gonna have access to. And at the start of the game, I'm gonna hit shuffle and it's gonna create a new mix of those sanctuary cards. And here we are, round one, and it is letter A. So we all know that it's letter A. But in the game, you're gonna have an option to not place the current round sort of path, which we'll get to in a little bit. And instead, if you don't wanna place the path, you can look at the next sanctuary so you'll know what we should be building to. And to do so, down below here, you're gonna look at these different tabs and you wanna click the one for the round you're in. So you're in round one and you wanna peek at round two, you click this, and you're gonna know that E is happening next. Now, no cheating, no looking ahead if you don't have, uh, if you haven't you know, used that ability, but then when we go to round two, I'm gonna click right here and type two, and now we all know it is round, the current round is E, and if we click round two, peek at round three, we know F's coming. But again, that's a special feature which we'll get to in the rules. All right, each round, I'm gonna flip out some of these path cards. And these path cards are gonna come out and we are gonna to have to place these path cards. So in this case, it's a three. The, each of your templates show the paths on the bottom here. And it's really nice because in this game, you're not allowed to rotate these at all. So this three, we know it goes up and then out to the right. And we're all gonna to have to place that. The rules for placement are pretty simple. You can place it anywhere on this board you wish, as long as it's an empty space. So you don't have to grow off the current sanctuary that we're playing on here, A. Eh? You, can, you can play towards a future one, but remember, they're not all going to be used all these sanctuaries so you have to be careful and once that's placed we flip out another one and we'll flip out another one and now we got a yellow card these are important because this determines how long the round is going to play once we get four yellow cards flipped out oh, wow this is quite a string of not yellow normally <laughs> yeah normally we get Yellow is faster than that. So that's a pretty long turn. But once we did that, once we placed all those, the round is over and we'd go to scoring. And how scoring works is pretty simple. So from letter A, whatever you've connected to, you're gonna count both the flower graphics and the little caterpillar graphics. And for each of them, you get a point. And a special thing to note, you have to have a path 
inside the sanctuary that we're scoring. So at one of these paths, I would have had to draw in the A square to truly connect to some of these others. And then I'd write my score here. So I'd write the current round is A, and I'm gonna put that down here. So I'd write A, and let's say I did this. Let's just, I'm just making this up. Let's say I went down like that, and on this one, I did a turn, and I did another turn. And let's say that's as far as I got. So I count up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I got nine points. Really good round, super awesome. But the downside is, another unique thing is, these clear, and now we flip over the next sanctuary card, which again, we'll be using that online template, but just to show you, we flip this over and it is F, and now we're playing towards F, and one of the tricky rules here, one of the things I find so intriguing about this game and just so fun and challenging, each round you have to score more than you did the previous round, so a tie won't even count. So I need to score in this next round where we're playing towards F, I have to score 10 or more points. If I don't, it gets reduced to zero. So if I score, let's say eight points, I have to write a zero here. And at the end of the game, when we get to final round scoring, we're gonna, I'm just gonna zip through this. Let's say I had all of these things connected, did all these sorts of things. Uh, you know, D, B, and let's say C. So we, let's say those were the rounds and let's say I scored seven, and then let's say eight, and let's say like 15. The rounds are over, and now we go to final game scoring. In final game scoring, we have three categories to look at. The first category here is the butterfly garden. These caterpillars turn into butterflies, and you score one point for every caterpillar that you've connected to this. So we're gonna like, throughout the game, be working on connecting these, and just like the sanctuaries, you need to have a path through this. So it could be a corner path like that, that would be good. Or maybe it's just a straight path, that's fine that this goes off the map, that's totally fine but now I only have one route to go th grow from. And the flower garden down here, uh, you get one point for every flower that connects to this. So that's for these two scoring. So I'd count up all the, the caterpillars, and let's say I had five on this one, and let's say I had like eight flowers on this. Then this one here is if we play with these decree cards, and I love these decree cards, the game comes with 16 of them. We only play with one each time, and what it does is it changes the rules a little bit. So maybe we would play with this decree card. Maybe we'd have this out there. And this one doesn't affect scoring, so we would just kind of put a dash here. Some affect scoring, some don't. This one just says that all ones are equal to twos and twos are equal to ones. So you can interchangeably place those cards. But there are some that affect end game scoring. There are some that are like little goals for you to kind of complete, like trying to connect the two I know you can connect the two gardens, and if you do that, it's six points, for example, uh, then that would affect the scoring down here. Now, the last thing about scoring, we total all that up, put the total here, and then down below here, it says zeros equal negative five. That's only for these up here. So if I scored a zero on one of these, if I didn't complete, let's say the decree, that's not negative five, but these up here are negative five, so that's costing me five points. And then we sum all that up, and that is our total. And that is how you play Coraco Avenue of the Kadama. Thank you all for watching. As always, give this video a like and share out the Let's Play with your friends, your family, your students. It is so much better when we sort of play together. I can't wait to play our next game together, so check out my channel and the upcoming live streams for us to sort of sit down on that table, play together. That's all I got for you today. So take care and play on.